Nigeria is one of the signatories to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, AFTA, and the implementation of the agreement is expected to commence in January 2021. Nigeria is one of the signatories to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, AFTA, and the implementation of the agreement is expected to commence in January 2021. As part of efforts to ensure the implementation of the agreement, a National Action Committee on Implementation of the Agreement has been put in place. However, the track records of the Nigeria Shippers Council as the Port Economic Regulator have not gone unnoticed. This informed the recent visit by the National Action Committee on Implementation of AFTA to establish a partnership with the Nigerian Shippers Council with a view to ensuring successful implementation of the agreement. The partnership between the National Action Committee and the Shippers Council is our focus today on the program. Welcome to the Shipper. My name is Rekia Zubairu. The program resumes shortly after this timeout. Do stay tuned. Nigerian shippers can so they to serve you well. No matter the problem, we go solve them for you. Yes, so the Nigerian shippers can so they feel in a parole now for every level. And as soon as goods they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian shippers can so we don't shop proper to fit here you weller, work with you weller, and help you fit serve your customers them better, no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian shippers can so get every every now to so film make government consider the problem when she pass them the face visit with office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily lane a papa email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng we website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng nigerian shippers council with a meet now for the port of an need Welcome back. Let's start by telling you that the successful implementation of AFTA lies in the involvement of the Port Economic Regulator, the Nigerian Shippers Council, especially in the areas of transport work stream in the maritime sector. Members of the National Action Committee on the implementation of AFTA made this known when they paid a courtesy visit to the Council to solicit its partnership on the implementation of AFTA. Lucy Lube has details. The African Union, AU, succeeded the Organization of African Unity, OAU, in 2002. And one of its goals is to accelerate the economic integration of the continent. A second goal was to coordinate and harmonize the policies between the existing and future regional economic communities for the gradual attainment of the objectives of the Union. In 2012, at the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa, leaders agreed to create a new continental free trade area by 2017. At the 2015 AU Summit in Johannesburg, the summit agreed to commence negotiations. These began a series of 10 negotiating sessions, which took place over the next three years. The first negotiating forum was held in February 2016. From February 2017, the technical working groups held four meetings where technical issues were discussed and implemented in the draft. 
A total of eight meetings were eventually held before the March 2018 Kigali Summit. At the meeting of March 8 to 9, 2018, the African Union Ministers of Trade approved the draft. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement is therefore a pact among 55 African Union nations. The agreement paved the way for the margins of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, which has been described as the largest free trade area in the world in terms of the number of participating countries since the formation of the World Trade Organization. The Continental Free Trade Agreement was brokered by the African Union and was signed on by 44 of its 55 member states in Kigali, Rwanda on March 21, 2018. Accra, Ghana serves as the Secretariat of AFCFTA. The general objectives of the agreement include creating a single market and deepening the economic integration of the continent, establishing a liberalized market through multiple rounds of negotiations, aiding the movement of capital and people, facilitating investment move towards the establishment of a future continental customs union, achieving sustainable and inclusive socio-economic development, gender equality and structural transformations within member states, enhancing competitiveness of member states within Africa and in the global market, encouraging industrial development through diversification and regional value chain development, agricultural development and food security, resolving challenges of multiple and overlapping membership. According to the WorldBank.org publication, the pact connects not less than 1.3 billion people across 55 countries with a combined estimated gross domestic product of 3.4 trillion US dollars. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, estimates that the agreement will boost intra-African trade by 52% by 2022. Nigeria is a signatory to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. The prospects of effective implementation of the agreement portends immense economic benefits for the country and Nigeria is seeking to take the lead on the continent. As a countdown to the commencement of implementation of the Continental Agreement intensifies, the National Action Committee on the Implementation of the Free Trade Agreement has swung into action to engage stakeholders in various sectors of the economy. This is with a view to harmonizing and harnessing the economic potentials in the sectors. The visit by the National Action Committee on Implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement to the Nigerian Shippers Council is the group's first port of call and it is strategic going by the submission by the leadership of the committee. According to the committee led by one of its co-champions, Fumi Folonsho, the Nigerian Shippers Council has done remarkably well as port economic regulator, especially keeping the economy going during the COVID-19 pandemic and the efforts by the council to ensure that business activities were not grounded at the gateway to the economy, the ports. She emphasized that there couldn't have been a better agency to seek partnership for the successful implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement than the Nigerian Shippers Council. Shippers Council is not just maritime. Here in this building, we have rail, land, aviation being looked at for purposes of trade facilitation, which they are noted for. So where else would we go but here? to first of all say, we've got to hold our arms. Let's see what you have. And going forward, every discussion that we must have with press, with different stakeholders, must be with the Shippers Council, along with us, to start bringing out, churning out figures, telling Nigerians what we do not know or what we should know, what are the objectives, what are the limitations. And they also must listen because if we must achieve the potentials in this free trade zone, we need everybody. The Executive Secretary, Nigerian Shippers Council, Hassan Belu, who lauded the move by the Committee on Implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement to work with the Council, said, Nigeria's readiness lies in continuous improvement of infrastructure. He, however, stressed that in view of the fact that countries like Morocco, K 
Kenya and South Africa appeared better prepared than Nigeria, there is hope that the various ongoing projects aimed at addressing infrastructural deficit will eventually give the country a quantum leap to catch up with other countries. Hassan Belu also hinted that the ongoing construction of the standard gauge rail line will stop over a dependency on roads to move cargoes while barges are being deployed through inland waterways to move cargoes. He added that there are other positive steps being taken by the federal government to make the ports competitive ahead of the implementation of the agreement. These include the move by the Nigeria Customs Service to eliminate physical examination by launching e-customs and deploying scanners in accordance with World Customs Organization recommendations. The ports must be contactless. All transactions must be online. Then we depend on the road, you know, for delivery and evacuation of cargo. Totally wrong. 75% or 80 is by road. But now we are introducing, and the federal government is quite aware of this, the rail. Rail will take much of it, distribute it under lower cost of transportation so that the truckers will get around for their money. We also have the barges through the inland waterways, taking you know, uh, you know, the cargo or bringing them in. So we won't depend on roads again. 100% physical examination will be a thing of the past. The event provided a platform for the Executive Secretary, Nigerian Shippers Council, to intimate the gathering with the multi-dimensional scientific approach, including electronic call-up system adopted to check indiscriminate truck parking on the roads and eliminate a papa gridlock by the first quarter of 2021. Good. But you have seen how some of the arteries or connected connecting roads have been done already. Uh, Creek Road, Liverpool Road. But we are talking about the major artery, which is the main artery. So, you know, all these trailers you come in here, they are not supposed to be. They are supposed to be at that Osho de Mile 2 Tinkan Island. And it's been done. And we hope by March it will have been commissioned. Director General, African Ship Owners Association of Nigeria and a member, National Action Committee on Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, Foluke Akimoladun, emphasized that the partnership with the Nigerian Shippers Council is aimed at building capacity for trade facilitation, especially in the areas of encouraging more Nigerians to invest in shipping companies and operations so that freight costs paid to foreign shipping companies can be cut down and Nigerian shipping companies can move cargoes from the country and make more money in the maritime sector. 90% um, of Nigeria's international trade is done via shipping. And the fact that uh, almost 100% of that is being done by foreign cargo already tells you how much foreign exchange we are losing in, in terms of freight prices that we're having to pay to international companies. The other side of it is that um, Nigeria doesn't also carry um, its major exports crude. Um, we also need those are things that need to be looked into as well. Nigeria has agricultural exports as well. Not many of those are being carried by Nigerian ship owners. And uh, one of the other things, and I'm speaking particularly from the maritime perspective, that we're looking at is to increase the number of Nigerians that have ships so that we can have more Nigerians earning from the maritime industry. Because from the ships, you will have Nigerian seafarers, that's people who man the ships. You will have Nigerian ship chandlers, people who are um, uh, preparing the food for the people on the ships. And then we have people who will be handling containers. We'll have more more work related to port agents, then more Nigerians involved in shipping operations. Some members of the committee also speak on areas the federal government can intensify efforts to prepare the country for the leadership role in AFCFTA. Nigeria has about 927,000 square kilometers of land space and businesses, uh, institutions scattered all over the country. Uh, for us to maximize the benefits of ACTA. A railway offers some of the cheapest uh, cost of freight. Uh, the, the, the more you move on rail, at least the more the distance you travel, the cheaper it is, both for passengers and goods. So be that as it may, it, that means we, uh, if we do not uh, develop our rail system, 
then the cost of moving goods within Nigeria may also be high. Members of the National Action Committee on the Continental Free Trade Agreement later presented the initial report of the workshop recently held on AFCFTA to the Executive Secretary, Nigerian Shippers Council, Hassan Belu. And I am handing it over to you, believing that you, knowing, not believing, knowing that you will drive it much more than we all can drive. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The NSC boss promised to study and utilize the recommendations of the workshop with a view to creating better advantages and ensuring that the transport sector plays a pivotal role in maximizing the gains of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Oh yes, let's also add that hope is high for ship acquisition as a National Fleet Implementation Committee is addressing the factors militating against ship acquisition and they are making a headway. A National Fleet is desirable and definitely global best practice. Time for a quick check on events in the international maritime sector. And Abike Idowu, as always, is standing by with tidbits. It's tidbits on your favorite maritime program, The Shipper. Abike Idowu is my name. Heads of maritime agencies expressed shock at the attack and level of destruction that took place at the corporate headquarters of the Nigerian Ports Authority in Lagos when hoodlums hijacked a nationwide peaceful protest by youths. The chief executives voiced their concerns during a solidarity visit to the site of the incident. They said it was a surprise to them that NPA was singled out for attack despite its documented corporate social responsibility and community relation initiatives, many of which were tailored to youth development. Now let me take you to the South-South, where Shippers Council Zonal Coordinator Mr. Ogo Iza sought the collaboration of the Nigerian Customs Service Area 2 Command on a port to prefer solutions to the challenges affecting shippers in the South-South region. Ogo Iza was accompanied by the president of the Bayelsa State Shippers Association, Mr. Ofan Udofia, and they were received by the controller Awal Baba Muhammad, who said false declaration is one of the major issues the customs encounters during examination of goods. He urged shippers and officers of the customs service to be forthright in all their transactions. And here is our complaint register for the week. A total number of five complaints have been received and they are all ongoing investigations. The complaints include unethical practices, refusal to return empty containers, illegal charges and storage charges. Mr. Dumebi Okafo of Newton Dan Logistics appreciated the council for the role we played in the release of his cargo. Here is his letter of appreciation. We thank you for the prayers and we are glad that you view our staff as agents of change who do not collect bribes. Another shipper, Mr. Adepojo of Kitad System, experienced a delay in the transfer of 48 20-foot containers. He brought the issue to Shippers Council and it was quickly resolved and he expressed his appreciation. It is now time for news on shipping around the world. The Chinese ship owner, SITC, has placed an order at Yang Xinjiang's shipbuilding for the construction of five new box ships at a total cost of $138 million. The order consists of 1,2700 TEU container ships and 4,2400 TEU container ships. In addition, two 1,800 TEU container ship new build options by SITC at Yang Xinjiang in August 2020 were also ordered as part of a six option order. The construction of the two option vessels and the five additional vessels will enable the company to expand its self-owned fleet of container vessels to meet the increase in demand for the company's service, 
SITC said, Japan's Mitsu OSK Lines, MOL, has joined a corporate academic partnership to develop zero emission vessels to be powered by hydrogen fuel and wind. Named the Wind Hunter Project, the Zero Emission Initiative seeks to combine wind propulsion sailing technology and wind energy converted to generate a stable supply of hydrogen. The partnership includes Auchi Ocean Consultants, National Maritime Research Institutes, Ports and Aviation Technology, Smart Design Co., Graduate School of Frontier Sciences of the University of Tokyo, amongst others. But wait, there's more. Car manufacturer Volkswagen Group has chosen marine biofuel supplier Good Fuels to supply biofuel to run its car carrier shipments for a fossil free transport operation. Good Fuels is supplying the advanced biofuel oil MR1 to 100 or BFO at Vlissingen in the Netherlands. The roll on roll off carrier, Patara, was bunkered with 100% biofuel which reduced the vessel's CO2 emissions by a minimum of 85% and all sulfur oxide emissions on voyages between Emden, Dublin, Satanda and Setubal with Volkswagen's cargo. By partnering with Volkswagen Group Logistics, we are showing that sustainable biofuels are scalable, truly sustainable, technically compliant affordable and market-ready solutions. The coming years are going to be momentous in terms of our decarbonization journey, so we want to continue working with the market leaders to help make a real difference," commented Isabel Welton, Chief Commercial Officer at Good Fuels. This partnership sure comes at a time when the shipping industry is under increasing pressure to comply with environmental regulatory changes and reduce its environmental impact. And that's it on this week's Tidbits. Till next time. The Nigerian Shippers Council is now better poised with responsive systems in place to help you and other shippers get seamless, stress-free transition for your clients' goods from point A to B. Today at the Nigerian Shippers Council, timeliness, orderliness, transparency and efficiency is all we care about. Put your complaint through to our helpline. Visit us at number 4, Ayodele Shoyode Lane at Papa Lagos or reach us on www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the point of your needs. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the port of your needs. Thanks, Abike. And with tidbits, it's a wrap on this week's edition of The Shipper. Many, many thanks for watching. And please keep the faith as we bring you the program again next week. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.